Once upon a time, there was a little hammer that could. She was surrounded by others in the university cup that were in training to be scholars. And my, oh my, she would watch them go. They would have the most interesting, the most compelling and burning questions about the world. And then they would summon up a protocol to use the most fundamental tools of science and statistics to answer it. These students were sharp. But for the little hammer that could, she was only left to feel lacking. To her, everything looked like a nail. She didn't dream of finding answers, but rather building the databases and software that she imagined in her head. She was not scholarly or sharp. She was consistent, hardworking, organized, and detail-oriented. While the scholarly pupils would go off to become academics or accredited data scientists, there was no path for her. But it was ironic because the things that she cared so much about were so badly needed for research practices to be reproducible and for software to be sustainable. If she made it through her field of study at all, what would become of her? This is the story of the research software engineer. While it's not the typical story for every research software engineer, it highlights the fact that a career track historically was not well established for someone that wanted to work on research software, data engineering, or other engineering practices supporting research but didn't necessarily want to be a traditional researcher. This is the plot that unfolds in our story today. Research is becoming increasingly more about having skills and expertise that go well beyond a particular domain of knowledge. To be a research scientist in this day and age, not only do you need to this domain expertise, but you also need to know some statistics, you need to be academic enough to know about how to ask and answer scientific questions, and you also need some kind of data set or method to do so. But expertise in data is just not enough. With the increasing demand for using computational resources and scientific programming, practices from software engineering have become standard practice in research today. But isn't it a little much to ask a researcher to do it all? RSC stands for Research Software Engineer, and it broadly refers to a software engineer that specializes in research software. This spans a wide gamut. Some RSCs are more researchers that do programming, and others are trained software engineers that work on research problems. If you identify as an RSE, regardless of where you fall on this spectrum, you are likely bringing practices from software development like version control, continuous integration, and data provenance into workflows to support sustainable software for research. So where do we find these RSEs anyway? The answer is that you might need to go looking for them. RSEs are like marshmallows hiding in a box of gold mined lucky charms. They're like mushrooms in the forest. You might not see them unless you proactively go out looking. Who are they? They are lab research associates, postdocs, staff, and sometimes even graduate students. They can be found at universities, academic institutions, national labs, and companies. Sometimes larger labs can afford to hire staff to exclusively work on tools, and research computing groups play a role in helping their users to write code. So what are the different types of RSEs? As mentioned previously, an RSE can range from a researcher that does a lot of programming to a software engineer that works in research. While no single RSE is likely to fall within one subtype, one RSE is likely to have one or more facets discussed next. The research software manager. An RSE manager is typically the lead of a group of RSEs with a role that might be similar to a product manager in a company or the head of a lab. You're likely going to see them in more well-established groups. This individual usually has expertise in software development and is the leader not just for the work of the group, but the individuals in it. The domain developer. It's likely that many RSCs sitting within labs started with or developed domain knowledge. 
For example, a researcher developing software for neuroimaging analysis is likely to be familiar with data formats and software for brain mapping. The domain developer might sit in a specific department or lab and work exclusively on developing and maintaining software for that domain. Researcher. A part of being an RSC might include conducting actual research. It could be res with respect to a domain of science, but it also might be research about software engineering, open source development, or general practices of conducting research to begin with. The generalist programmer. In stark contrast, a generalist might assist researchers with good software development practices without having expertise about a specific domain. For example, a statistical programmer might hold office hours and assist researchers from departments across the university. This role can be viewed as a service where the programmer has expertise in his or her practice and the researchers come to him or her to get support. Open source developer. While a generalist programmer helps researchers with code they are writing, an open source RSE moves up one level to work on open source software that is valuable for their user base. The open source RSE must independently seek out or use some other method to derive what software is valued by their users and what improvements are needed. The generalist developer. The RSE developer is by far the most challenging subtype of RSE as it can be more disconnected from the user base and sometimes requires intuition about what doesn't exist, but might, to improve research sustainability across groups. A generalist developer does not provide a service for researchers like the generalist programmer, but instead works on general software that intuitively could directly or indirectly help researchers. The margins are not set in stone. So what's the problem? It's funding, of course. It tends to vary by institution, but one thing we can agree upon is that expertise with software engineering is essential for reproducible research. So what does that mean? It either means we need researchers to have prowess not only in their field of specialty, but also as software engineers, or we need to provide some kind of research software engineering as a service for members of a community. The problem is that historically, the awareness about this need is not there. It's time to foster awareness around the importance of the RSC and provide support and funding for them on the level of the institution. Can you imagine a future where the little hammer that could would have realized her love for software engineering and her desire to work in research and then have a clear career track and future presented to her? This is the future that we need to work towards, not just for reproducible science, but for the hearts and minds of all the little hammers, nails, and other builders out there that have yet to grow.